Greetings, Saber Rights. Anonymous here. A question that keeps coming up a whole lot, um, especially with uh, people who are new to this kind of stuff, martial arts and, and that kind of thing, um, as well as people who've been in it um, in different styles and all of that, and then coming to us where we've got a couple of uh, rather abstract training methodologies. Um, one of these is extreme stances. So one-legged stances, crouching stances, these kinds of things. What, why do you train those? Um, <clears throat> obviously, the complaints that often come up are due to the difficulty that a lot of these stances uh, possess in mastering. Um, and so that leads people to believe that they don't have a lot of application. That's true and not true. Um, like we always say, training and and uh, fighting are two separate things. But uh, I'll go over a couple of, of the uh, kind of basic rules that, that we're going through. First of all, um, the one-legged stances that you see a lot of times, um, which are indicative of, say, Chinese Kung Fu and, and that kind of thing. Um, for example, these, those, um, any of these one-legged stances where, where uh, you're kind of balanced on one leg, you see it a lot in Makashi, um, a lot in Ataru, that kind of thing, to there. So what exactly are these good for? Um, most of the time when you see them, um, take this stance here. <clears throat> it's a reaching stance. When we put the weight on one leg, we're able to kind of move our shoulder past that point of contact with the ground. So in a regular lunge, I'm not like this. I'm going to be limited by how far I can reach past my, my knee. I can't go that, even if I reach back here, I can go a little bit past it, but then my uh, angle of attack goes down. So what I really want to do um, in those particular situations um, is shift all of my weight to one leg so I can keep my balance here um, on one, one leg and then extend my shoulder far past like that. <clears throat> okay. So when doing them, we want to make sure that we're, we're leaning with our bodies. So out like this. Now a lot of times it's, it's gone down to a low target because a lot of times that's where, where we're gonna kind of go. Um, the idea is you are out of, you're kind of out of range. So it's gonna be a, a quick attack, if anything. So one of the complaints about one-legged stances is of course there's, there's no balance. You, you can easily be toppled over. And this is true, but you wouldn't use them where your opponent was close enough to you that they could do that. It also allows you to recover very, very quickly. So as I'm as far forward as I can be, I just have to throw my other foot down and I'm back in a good stance. And I've actually backed up a little bit. So the one-legged stances like this, we're really reaching kind of past there. Also, when we're doing it in, in solo forms, we are practicing our balance, we're practicing our stopping. Um, if we're moving forward really, really, really quickly, and we can bring this other leg in to kind of gather up our center over the foot, that will help us keep our balance. So that's one application for that. Um, <clears throat> crouching stances um, are gonna come in a little bit differently. The complaint down here is that you feel like you're completely immobile and that you're, you're gonna be trapped by your opponent. And Again, definitely a possibility. This is again why we train the stances down that low. The likelihood that in weapon combat, especially with a lightsaber, you're going to need to get down that low is very remote, granted. But it could come up and training that low does help open up your hips, get your core going, get your center nice and solid. So it's a very good practice in and of itself just for exercise sake. Um, <clears throat> the downward stance there, it's uh, 
probably most prominent in our Seresu form, um, <clears throat> where you're down like this, you come through, and then you come through again, and then up like that. Okay? Now, <clears throat> the hanging stances here, having this knee forward, it's kind of like being in a position for a passing step, and you've already got the leg up ready to step. That whole entire sequence is designed to help you move around while down low, right? We're going to shift between our stance here. We're going to be keeping our, our blade um, covering us. As we go through here, we can shift onto this foot and move into a cross stance, okay? Being able to do that allows you to move very, very low to the ground and when you get into a fight, you tend to rise up. So we always want to try to feel like we're kind of sinking our weight down. Um, and that's really the use of that stance. It's going to come in handy a lot in binds when somebody's up on top of you and you're trying to wrestle around. It's also good if you get disarmed. You can get down between their legs where they're a little, a little less likely to, to uh, take a big swing at you and knock them over in the process. So, as I said, these instances that they will happen in free play, very, very rare. Um, that's not what we're claiming. Um, since we're practicing as a martial art, we're trying to train for a lot of eventualities and eventualities that we can't really predict. So, we try to include as much as we can. Um, as I said, the hanging stances here we can go in and into a little bit. This foot being up like this allows you to immediately step without having to pick it up and move it. Now granted, it is in a more visible place like this. However, you can pretty much step anywhere. Again, it's not a stance that I would recommend getting into if your opponent was close enough to you to push you over. That's not really how it's used. Hanging guards and all of this um, work exactly the same way, okay? But these stances can also be used tactically um, as a taunt, trying to get people to uh, attack you in a particular way. Um, and they can just set you up for better positions. So, in training, they're very, very good for fitness, for balance, core stability. If you're really into training your core, skip the sit-ups, skip the crunches. They're not going to do you a whole lot of good. Standing on one leg is going to do you a lot of good. Crouching down on the ground is going to do you a lot of good. Right? It's not only going to do your core a lot of good, it's going to do your knees, your hips, your ankles, even your shoulders a whole lot of good. Okay? Just remember, only go as far as you can go. Don't go too far. Don't try to get low just for the sake of getting low. Getting low while maintaining good alignment and good posture is key to why you train this. All right? Okay, so just a little bit of an overview for some of the crazy stances that we do. Um, we'll probably go into them more, uh, maybe even in the laboratory, so that uh, you can see how they're used um, kind of more freely. Anyway, all right, so thanks for watching. Have a great day. Happy Sabers.